Salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Kedekura Show, where I always have to do the duty of deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And let's talk about FPS games. Yeah? Oh, I love FPS games. Because all the fucking characters walk around like like this. Yeah, Bioshock, Far Cry, uh, uh, Fallout. Uh, even though that was all a uh, strategy game to begin with. Uh, Resident Evil Survive. Oh, no, that, that was shit. Uh, Jumping flat! Okay, I do not claim to be an expert on FPS games whatsoever. It's not actually one of the genres I flock to without thinking. I do enjoy playing them though, don't get me wrong, and geez, you can't deny we've come so far since Wolfenstein 3D. FPS games as a whole are fast, frantic, and very visceral. Everything's going on in your face and you have to deal with it. And yeah, they may be slightly oversaturated nowadays with the same copy-paste shit, but I will never pick on someone for only ever playing them. I totally get the appeal. And when you talk about FPS games, what can you say really about do 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 yeah seriously what can you say the series all about the earth being too greedy for its own good causing literal hell and swarms of demons to pass through rifts and ravage the world and one nameless guy sent in to clear it all up alone the original game id software 1993 one of the most impactful and influential pc video games in history that refined and changed first person shooters forever it had a sequel with one of the greatest gaming easter eggs ever and another one with some of the most intensely atmospheric and impressive lighting ever seen in a game up to that point and most recently the series gave birth to one of the greatest first person shooters I've ever played in recent memory. Doom is a name that for many people is as old as gaming itself, as iconic as Mario or Sonic, as popular back in the day as Minesweeper. And you know what? I actually haven't sat down and finished the original game. I've seen tons of it and I have played bits and pieces of it throughout the years, but you know what? With the advent of this PS1 port that came out in 1995, I haven't really got an excuse now. I mean, just look, just look, just look at that fucking face. Just look at that face. I can't say no to that face now. Hey, please play the game. Before we begin though, I have a question for you. Wouldn't you agree that video games have some of the most memorable musical themes in history? I think we can all pretty much agree on that, but would you also agree with me when I say that there are few musical themes as memorable or as impactful as this? Yeah, well, tough shit, because this is Ultimate Doom on the PS1 and the music sounds like this. Get used to it, you fuckheads. Okay, let's take a step back for a second. What we are playing today, since I appear to be the PS1 guy on fucking YouTube according to so many people, is indeed the 1995 PS1 port of Doom, which at the time would have probably been the best home console port, well, affordable and useful home console port of the game at that moment in time. Not only because of the graphical capability, impressively smooth gameplay, and the stark contrast of the SNES port released around the same time, but also with the fact that Doom 2 also appeared on this disc. Two games in one. Revolutionary FPS games in the same package on a CD game for a CD console that wasn't the Atari Jaguar. I can imagine this being a big deal back in the day for non-PC users, and the music may be very different and not my preference, but the tense atmospheric drones in this version, I actually really fucking loved here. Where the original classic soundtrack gears you up for a thrash metal romp to kill the spawns of Satan, or at least make you think, Wait a second, this, is fucking Metallica. this game instead makes you realise, oh shit, I'm alone, I'm surrounded, every corner could kill me. And it's crazy how much a simple change can drastically affect the atmosphere of a game, seriously. If you never thought the original Doom could be a little bit scary on occasion, try it with this soundtrack. In the middle of a pitch black room with flickering lights with tons of corridors and invisible enemies running around, you you'll see what I mean. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. What's the story in this game exactly? You kill shit. <laughs> no, no, we aren't quite there yet. We're at the story, that's the gameplay. Come on, what's the story of Doom? You kill shit. 
Oh. To be fair, there is a rich lore to this game and the series as a whole, actually, but the devs did not go out of their way to shove any of that in your face. The actual plot, what you're doing, is never briefed in-game. You just start, and you're looking forward with a gun, that's you, you've had a lot of beef, and within seconds you're running around shooting down anything that looks funny or poses any kind of threat to humanity. The cover explains it, the back explains it, the title explains it, and the game explains it. And the fact that you can enjoy what's on offer here with or without context is truly remarkable game design that proves how well Doom is carried on by its gameplay alone more than anything else. Do you even know what your main character's name is? Doom Guy. No joke. Doom Guy. That's who you are. It's brilliantly forward and self-aware. It was so cool that they even brought that idea back in the latest Doom, where the backstories I found genuinely fascinating, but does your character care? Fuck off he does. That's not the point here. Brutal, gory action is. And for such an old game for as far as FPS games have come, and on a version of the game not the most perfect it could be, I must admit, I bloody loved my time here. I even loved it from the second I started and had to pick my difficulty. <laughs> what? Are you insulting me, game? Don't be a cocky git, I'm worth more than that. Hmm. Yeah. Ultra violence. Oh yeah, I can't do that one today, no. You caught me at a bad time. I have a cold, a chew. Hurt me plenty. There you go, that sounds like a good place to start. Woo, okay, well the controls are a little bit finicky. Am I playing Doom or watching fucking Dancing on Ice? I'm sliding all over the damn place, my god. I'm sure I'll get used to it, and you need to remember that this is the very early days of FPS gameplay, so I'm sure it will click in a second. Oh, oh hang up, shit, my gun's gone. Oh, I'm fucked now. Oh wait, no I'm not! Don't worry ladies and gentlemen, we're all saved! Doom guy is gonna nudge the demons back to the underworld with his mangy pathetic fist! <laughs> okay, I've played this intro level the most whenever I've played the original Doom, and I can definitely recall a secret button here. Where is it? Is the PS1 version designed differently? I don't know. Well, what I do know is that, yeah, it's not PC quality, but the game looks bloody great on this system. Doom on the PC itself already did a lot with its limitations, but the PS1's added limitations didn't seem to alter that much, all things considered. Aside from a few times where there's too many sprites and projectiles on screen and the frame rate goes a bit funny. The textures look nice, the 3D effect looks great, the sprites are wonderful, it's so horrifically oppressive and murky without ever being samey, the different chapters you explore through all look vastly different and increase the atmosphere tenfold, this is really damn faithful. I'm proud of you, game. Have a gold star. The controls as well are different and a bit strange to go back to, I will admit. However, they also do a great job. Once you adjust, it's totally fine. The top triggers strafe you left and right, the bottom triggers cycle through your weapons, triangle fires, circle is the action button, and the D-pad works nicely for the slightly blocky aesthetic. Once you start naturally shifting left and right with the triggers while zooming off in another D-pad direction, it becomes extremely fast and fluent, which is impressive for the time, honestly. The combat also really comes together when you nail the controls. You see, your slippy slidey speed isn't an accident, and your strafing buttons aren't either. Either. The game actively encourages you to constantly move, orbit around your enemies, avoiding instant hit scan gun attacks that just attack you if you're in the vicinity of that part of the screen, and juggle your aiming and ammo management around actual physical projectiles fired by the enemies that you can avoid. Once you start seeing enemies that fire hugely damaging rockets or see enemies that make an instant beeline towards you for ramming damage, you'll be glad for the slick and glidey control style, and since the whole game and arenas within the windy maze-like levels are built with your movement and enemy behaviours in mind, not one encounter feels samey or even a joke to go against because even if you dart around and spam shots, you may not need to worry about aiming up and down, but you'd be surprised how often you miss your target and waste ammo, which is not the most plentiful in a game like this. Concentration is paramount, and you'll find that over-aggressive shooting isn't rewarded, but aggressive kinetic action is, along with a balance of picking the correct shot timing with the correct gun. Oh, kick-ass, look at this, I got a chainsaw! Oh, oh, find some meat. All right then. Meat! <laughs> To be fair, the chainsaw is very cool and great if you have no other gun options, but man, just having it on you all the time can be a little bit annoying. I get it, it's a chainsaw, but that's a fucking awful noise to hear in a constant string and don't even get me started on the attacking noise. Oh, and check this out, I got a damn chain gun, and I even picked up... Okay, what the fuck is that thing? Well, it doesn't matter anyway, because in the very next stage, I wasn't paying attention to the things behind me and I died. Shit. And of course I start from the beginning of the stage and lose all of my weapons I've found. Oh, now if that's not a terrifying consequence of death, I don't know what is. The music change was enough, but now this is just not very nice. Now I'm doubly nervous since I've got pissy guns, stronger enemies to deal with, a new area I don't know yet, no idea where hidden weapons are, no armor to back me up, and- oh, the fuck is that thing?! Uh, 
Peppa Pig. <laughs> okay, Christ almighty, I found my chainsaw again. I'm feeling a bit safer now, seriously. This may be a bit punishing, but I think it works to the game's oppressive nature so well. This game is not a shooting gallery in a ghost train. This is the forces of hell trying to kill you, and it certainly feels like that. Yes, it is annoying to lose everything and start again without a checkpoint, but damn, it makes you scared of death, right? That's what we need in a game like this. Oh, by the way, I anger the cheat code some weapons now. Yeah. I refuse to do unlimited ammo and invincibility, but to be honest, jumping into this game, I didn't realise how big it actually was. And you know, I'm a very busy man, so I, I haven't really got all the time in the world to keep dying and losing my weapons and trying again and finding all my shit again and starting from the beginning. I, I just, I need to get on with it and see as much of the game as possible because I'm a very busy man and you know, I'm a very busy man. Besides, even with all the guns, you still need to scavenge the environment for vital health and armour pickups, ammo, key cards to progress and even backpacks to carry more ammo, so your infantry will be useless if you play recklessly even with that cheat. And let's be real, can you fucking blame me for wanting access to all the guns? There's some of the most badass, multi-purpose, distinctly different and balanced weapons in FPS history and this is one of the earliest ones in the genre. Fisting is useless. But the chainsaw is really effective if you have no ammo and have enough health to grind down. The pistol is a long range and accurate low power starting weapon that has the benefit of the most ammo you'll find in a stage so it's a great safety net. The shotgun is a more powerful and slower version of the pistol with a bit less ammo scattered around. The super shotgun is ridiculously overpowered but can only fire once before reloading every single time. The chain gun is great for staggering enemies and constantly damaging them but each shot isn't too strong and it uses up bullets really quickly. The rocket launcher covers a huge area and is insanely high in the damage but extremely risky since the blast radius is so big it can quickly kill you if you don't use it properly. Plus, the ammo is rare. The plasma rifle was my favourite. It's incredible for groups as it's essentially a rapid fire shotgun, but again, the ammo isn't too common. And the BFG, the big fucking gun, is the most devastating weapon in the game, but takes a lot of charge time to fire and uses a massive chunk of plasma rounds to use even one time. All have their uses, all have their issues, all feel different, all feel incredible, and there's nothing more to say about them. They all rock. And speaking of things that all FPS games should do in my opinion, along with the varied cast of weapons as balanced as this, the level design holds up brilliantly. Every stage is a collection of wide rooms, elevators, stairs to higher levels and corridors are plenty. Within these rooms you'll need to fight through whatever the game throws at you in order to find key cards to enter coloured doors to progress to the exit, and that immediately makes the game and its world more interesting and less linear than it could have been. Especially without the need of a guidance marker, these levels are big. However, a very nifty map is there for you if you so desire to use it, and it did save my my ass more than one time. Even stages like the Halls of the Damned require that you go totally out of your comfort zone all at once because it needs you to find every keycard in the stage to open one set of doors to the exit. And making sure that you pay attention to every switch you see on the wall is crucial since the environment changing around you can reveal not only a secret or two but even a key to your salvation and the next stage. I also love how the game gives you tons of moments to make you remember as important for later. Like you can see the chainsaw from this window in stage 2 but you can't reach it. So you can either ignore it and carry on to the end of the level because you think you missed the chance to grab it, or that should be indication enough that you maybe just haven't found the secret yet, so you're extra vigilant from then on, find a switch, not notice any immediate changes around you, so go back, find a special room that wasn't open previously, and bam, the reward is yours. Well done for searching around with your own intuition. And tons of stage secrets are done like that, teasing you through gaps in the walls and factory windows to floors below with an ultra special item or weapon to grab in your view, and trusting you to find out how to reach there yourself. And even when the secrets aren't teased to you, they are literally fucking everywhere, seriously. Of course there are the switch secrets, but how about that? Does a wall texture not fit? Are there different colours or out of place patterns that don't correlate with the rest of the texture? Then it's probably a hidden door, so go over to it and hit that action button, where you may be ganged by an enemy or two, but mostly get rewarded for your keen eye with weapons, armour, health, superchargers, all proper rewards and ones that make every stage feel alive and totally memorable for as primitive as they look by today's standards. You may even find things like complete maps to an area, radiation suits to allow traversal over dangerous ground, the pre-mentioned BFG, the best weapon in the bloody fucking game, also named identically to a tall old skinny man with big ears, and even a berserk. What does that do? All oh, right, well, it, it does that. Red everywhere. One hit punches. Christ almighty, the mangy fist just got a whole lot more fisty. And well, if there's one thing I can take from all of that is that he's not really happy with me right now. And the exploration does complement your fuzz movement as you quickly zip around the stage looking for things and it's just as fun as the combat in that sense. Especially when they form together during a battle where you need to find cover, grab important items and ammo and fight off the bastards at the same time. Watch out for the traps though.
The game likes to do that. Enemies appearing from walled off cages behind you, poisonous liquid rising through the floor. Even entire levels can be gauntlets or survival matches based entirely around small arenas, switches, and traps that you need to activate in order to continue. Even if you find something awesome like invincibility, the game sticks a finger up at you and says, Oh, can't take damage now, huh? Well, fuck you, now you can't even see. How do you like that lemony fresh? And yes, the game is gory and it's beautiful because of that, but it also serves a gameplay purpose alongside being lovely. Your carnage that you leave behind can act as breadcrumbs for areas you've already slaughtered through, and the enemies all running around killing each other in the distance, screeches and wails of distant monsters waiting to pounce on you. It's not just building dread and character to the game, but also acts as a subtle guideline for areas you haven't yet been to. And the character of the game comes together in holy matrimony with guidelines with the exit signs of all of the levels. Seriously, this is just a fucking fire exit. A fire exit in the middle of hell. I'm sure that will come in handy. Although one thing I neglected to mention was in fact that the PS1 version of Doom is what the developers call Ultimate Doom. Different levels, different layouts, different secrets, that kind of thing. But it also means that there's an entire other ending chapter with a load of other levels at the end of the game that wasn't in the original build of the game on PC. Thy flesh consumed. And fuck me, that is officially when Doom put me in a mood. Ah! Seriously, man, this bit is hardcore. Too hardcore. I couldn't do it. I tried. Damn it, did I try, but it was simply too hard for me. Enemies everywhere. Bosses as regular enemies in clumps. Parts where you need to skim across gaps in the level because you can't jump in order to reach doors. It never fucking ends. Even with all of the weapons, I lost all of my ammo multiple times, and the frame rate here tears its own arms off and tries to write poetry. It doesn't work. That last part of the game, unfortunately, was just way too challenging for me, and I had to stop. However... Doom on PS1, without a shadow of a doubt, gets the salvage today. And not just because it's a great game on its own, but also because that version of the game has two awesome games built into it in one, and for an affordable 1995 CD console port of a PC game, it's pretty fucking solid. It did the job it needed to do brilliantly, so yeah, be proud of that, id. It was really good. If it's your birthday today, while watching this video, happy friggin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Doom, doom, doom! Thanks so much for watching this video and please do consider supporting the show on Patreon where you can have your names in the credits or even get 24 hour early access ad free to every Catacorus episode. Special thanks to Crash Rocks 1419, Omarma2, Patrick Ferguson, Andy Ellis, Carsten, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, QB, Matthew Elliott, Nathan Young, Nicole Gunara, and Jacob Pappenfuss.